Hi there. He may drop out of the cabinets. Yep. Hey there, we are at the Terrier Association of Oregon, and I'm here with our president, Kimmery Wolf. Hi there, everyone. I'm much shorter than you are. This I might have to stand on my chicken chest. <laughs> and and here's Dan back. I knew you would be back. <laughs> Hi, Lee, and welcome everyone to Ring Ready Live, the home of the owner handler brought to you by Showsite Magazine. And as you all can see, I'm here with Lee Whittier, who is on location. Lee, tell everyone where you are. We are in St. Paul, Oregon, and we're having the January 2021 rescheduled Terry Association of Oregon here in St. Paul with the Rose City Cowboy Cluster. Wonderful. So how is the show going so far? What do you think, Kim? Oh, it's a great venue. Everything's running smoothly. We've got these amazing like circus-like tents, so there's lots of shade. Um, it's a warm day, but we're at the St. Paul Rodeo Stadium, so it's a beautiful venue, and I've had lots of compliments on the venue already. I know Everybody's loving it. Yeah. We're usually inside in this, you know, expo <laughs> building, but we're enjoying outside. And uh, we've got sweeps going on right now for Airedale. But we're just keeping um, got, um, it's lunchtime right now, so we're taking a little bit of a break in the action. No, you are. I will, I'll stand on my tippy toes. There we go. <laughs> There's only about a foot in height. There. Right. Well, you said that so, you're uh, having lunch right now, and I'm sure it's a well-deserved break. Lee, thank you for making this happen from the show. You are the show chair. We have about 200 terriers here today, so we're really excited about that. We've got supported entries, and uh, there's specialties going on all around us. There's nations and Newfoundland and Cocker Spaniels and Boxers, boxers. Old English Sheepdogs I saw earlier. Um, oh, there's some, um, looks like Shelties and yeah, um, this is a great day. I like the, the specialty days ahead of a, of a big cluster because it's a slow start for us. So we all get back in gear and, um, and so do the dogs. So it's a nice way to start the weekend. And we are in, well, some of us are in cowboy garb. This was the best that I could do for the honoring the cowboy uh, stadium here. It's a huge, huge area. Yeah. Um, lots of parking. Yeah. And I know that they're going to have the rodeo again this year. Of course, last year it was canceled due to COVID, but they're going to have the rodeo again this year. So we were so excited that we were able to use this venue and um, and have, an out, have it outside in the summer here in Oregon. It's, we've got a really great entry and um, lots of um, happy people I know. Personally, I watched my friends finish two miniature Volteria champions this morning, so lots to cheer about. And we've got That's some wonderful. great rosettes and ribbons, and we're giving out uh, new champion rosettes for uh, people who finish their champions. Yeah, new title ribbons, yep. what a great little addition to our club. I know I'm, I feel really honored to be part of this club in particular because it is. it was one of the first um, group um, clubs in the nation. It was started in 1969, so we had our 50th anniversary a couple of years ago. And we still have one of our founding members um, in our club, and she's actually judging the, um, the Air uh, Airedale Sweeps here in a little bit, uh, Sharon Jacobson. So we have quite a rich history in, um, in the Terrier Association Club. And I don't know about other clubs, but our club is growing. We have new Terrier people coming in all the time. We, have, um, we just um, read out new applications at our last meeting last week. Um, so it's an exciting time for us. I know it's hard. Not everybody wants to own a Terrier, but um, we own Terriers, and I know you have an honorary Terrier I have yourself. an honorary Terrier, I do. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You do. You you just said something interesting there about your club membership growing. I want to ask you, uh, to what do you uh, attribute the growth? 
Well, that's a really great question. I think that um, one of the things this club really tries to do is be a community and support each other. And um, because it's all different kinds of terriers, we've got um, lots of encouragement from each other. So we don't necessarily compete with each other. And so it's a nice way to support each other. And, and um, being tied all around terriers, um, a lot of the terrier membership and, um, and ownership of terriers is on the decline. So we as a group of, of fanciers are really focused on encouraging people to own and love and show and do performance with their terriers. So I think that's why um, we're, we're seeing that increase. And, and we're just a lot of fun people. So um, <laughs> would like to hang out with us. I was going to say, even non-terrier people like to hang out at the Terrier Association of Oregon. Yep. And I can speak for that welcoming feeling that our, our club president, Kim Rhee, and all of our all of our people bring to the club. We're really excited about that. And um, one of our very newest members is stewarding today for us. I know. She was her first time stewarding all by herself. <laughs> she practiced last Friday. Well, okay, I gave her, you know, a, a couple of, maybe an hour of, of um, support and then she did it by herself and she's all by herself doing it today so it's really exciting having people wanting to step up and do new things and um and we just have a great time so what we're really hoping to also bring back um this summer maybe not this summer but we'll bring back our fun match where we do lure coursing and um, we usually do a nose work seminar um, so we do have lots of fun things even for people who aren't doing confirmation or if you have a retired dog and you want to have fun with them so and, so and, you're and saying, go ahead, Dan. I was just going. To ask, so, so terriers make fine performance dogs. Is that right? Oh, do they do. Don't let anybody tell you that a terrier that's strong-willed doesn't make a good performance dog. And um, they might take a little bit of um, extra training because they're kind of willful. But um, but they make they have lots of good drive and are um, excited to work. So I know personally I've done rally with my both miniature bull terriers and I have um, lure coursing titles and um, and nose work is my love. So I have um, I have the first miniature bull terrier with a level three nose work title. Congratulations! Um, and um, they can they can do a lot of things. So agility and. Um, all sorts of all, all those sports. I, I'm I'm really excited to see things like a parkour and and um, the fun agility courses too. We might be able to put something like that together our next match. Too. Yeah. And and I I do want to say that as show chairman, it's a pleasure to work with the show committee. Um, really, everyone knows their job. Everyone's you know gleeful and happy at eight o'clock seven o'clock in the morning we got here at 6 45 with coffee in hand and everybody had just we know our jobs we pitch in we do it and um i think our judges are very happy uh, they have have um nice some very nice dogs we, we draw dogs from all over normally we have canadian dogs as well but the not quite open yet. Yeah, not yeah. not quite not quite there yet. Yeah. Well, we're excited because now we get to have this show. This show is normally in January, so we're gearing right up for right after this. We'll we start sure are. focused on on that event that'll be um, back in January again. So, and for me, that's like the start of my year. This five day run in Portland um, to get started for the show year, and so I really love this um, show cluster. Thank you. I think that that is true for a lot of exhibitors, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You know, your show and a few others definitely kick off the new year. Uh, Lee, a moment ago, you said this something. Right the background, we've got lots of happy Some, people. Yep. Somebody just won something wonderful. Yep, the Dalmatians <laughs> just won some things. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and I also want to say thank you to Lee for being our show chair for this great venue. There's lots of moving parts with the different clubs to interact with, all the different members. So many changes this year with COVID and um, judging changes at the last minute and all of that. So to be able to keep all those balls in the air and and, and I had no worries that things were going to go off um, smoothly today and it was true. So thank you so much for that. Well, you know, it's my pleasure, honestly. And um, it's it really is a pleasure working with this particular show committee and we did have some we did have some last minute changes that we weren't really sure what was going to happen but um because we have such a good show committee 
some of the people punted at the last minute and stepped up and helped out where we weren't sure we were going to be able to pull it off. So um, that's what to me my job as show chairman is, is to just bring people together and get people knowing, you know, what their jobs are. And, and I just, just really, the yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without them. So it's yeah. really about, about the committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, together. I'd like to ask both of you, uh, what, can you name a few things that most owner handlers have no idea that a show chair does? Tell us some of those responsibilities. You know, maybe as an example, what 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 is one thing that happened this morning that required your expertise that, that goes unseen by most people? Well, I know I don't know what happened at this show, but we did have something happen at the last show that um, we didn't have any winners ribbons. So you get your um, winners dog and winners bitch, and um, and. We didn't have any of those ribbons, so our ribbon um, uh, uh, chairperson got on the phone with the ribbon supplier, and they printed them out and had them to us within about an hour and a half. So wow. it was it was one of those things behind the scenes that you just never see happen, and you have people take care of that. So um, all sorts of um, things like that that happen. Facebook Live. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, come on. That, that, was yes. our, that was our illustrious um, uh, leader uh, in the uh, combined specialties, Patty Strand. Yes. And, oh. uh, yeah, we definitely couldn't make things happen without it, it, her. It, oh, sure. We it's a could big not. Deal. It is a very big deal here, and yeah. we are so grateful to her. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a little warm here, so some of us are a little sensitive about you. Know, <laughs> I, I, I'm really thinking. glad I can't see myself in the screen right now because I looked on my camera earlier, and I was I have nice rosy cheeks that um, is all due to the heat here. So. <laughs> That's great. Anything else happened this morning or, or this last week that you had to make some um, juggling acts? Yeah, there was, well, there was some last minute transportation things, yeah. but, you know. Well, and I think that's a good point. You know, people don't just magically appear. So the judges have to have somebody assigned to them to make sure that they get picked up from the airport and taken to their hotel, taken from the hotel to the show site. And that's just an example of one thing that happens behind the scenes that um, that people might not think about. So. Yeah, and you know, I think that it's, I don't I don't even know if it's owner handlers. It's a lot of exhibitors don't really understand what it's like to put on a show. What, what teamwork it takes, the amount of attention to detail that it takes, um, all the things that go into making this happen, I think, I would say a good percentage of people really don't yeah. understand that. Well, and this is a great example this year because we changed venues. They had to think about things like how are we going to have sun or shade for the, the rings. And we had to make sure that there wasn't another big venue or another big event taking up the tents. If this was next weekend, we wouldn't have had these tents available. So all of these pieces came together. And You can um, see the tenting. I'm tilting the camera yeah. up a little bit. We have yes. these huge circus style tents. One of my... Um, uh, other club members was telling me it reminds her of Montgomery County oh, where they yeah. have all of these great tents set up and it's just a really well done so yeah so much behind the scenes and change this year just because of this different venue as well and making sure that there's going to be food on hand because it's a different place you know all sorts of stuff you yeah know, those food trucks didn't just show up no. on their own we had to make sure that we invited them to be here well, that's right. And I'm sure everybody's happy that you did invite them. You know, Leah, I want to let you know that we're hearing from a lot of our viewers and many, many of them are members of uh, their uh, shows committees, uh, including some show chairs. And I just want to give a shout out to Dolly, who is uh, putting on her show for Herbery, which is at holding its first open show as part of the Miscellaneous. Uh, breeds. So we want to wish Dolly a lot of luck with her first venture as show chair. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to Denise, who is listening to our talk while she's whelping a litter of puppies. So that's exciting. And, and Denise, we wish you your dam and those puppies all the best. And um, again, we're hearing from lots of folks. 
who, um, you know, who are members of clubs and many of them um, are part of their show committees. So some of us have some idea of what's going on, but Lee, as you said, most of it is just invisible to the exhibitors, but we're always grateful uh, for everything that is done. The fact that food trucks show up, that ribbons show up, that judges show up, Right. And, and um, you know, everybody has a smile on their faces, and that's uh, that's kind of remarkable. You know that you're in the thick of it uh, when everybody's showing. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan, and um, thank you, Kimri, for being here. Happy to do it. Thanks so much for the invite, and uh, and thanks for everything that you do. We do appreciate it so much. Come back at you. All right. All right, Dan. We're going to drop off now. Thank you. Great. Well, have a wonderful day, and I wish you all the best with the remainder of your show. And see you in the studio next week. Yay. All right. Bye, ladies. Bye, Bye for bye. now. <laughs> and everyone, if you're... Well, if we'll you're, say goodbye as soon as... Okay, there they go. Everyone, thank you for staying with me, and... Um, I just want to say hello to several people. Denise, Megan, Kristen, thank you, Lori. Thomas, good to have you here, Lori, again. Megan, welcome. Uh, this has been an interesting show. It's our first show on location, and um, we are kind of working our way through. We're hoping that we can bring you more episodes, more programming from events that you are interested in uh, being a part of. If you can't attend, a show on the West Coast, uh, we may be bringing the show to you. We are planning to be at Montgomery County, which was mentioned in this show, and uh, Morris and Essex as well. So if you're going to be at those shows or, or any shows coming up, um, be sure uh, to let us know. Um, Alex uh, ha has uh, written and, and is reminding everyone how important it is to be an active member of your club. Uh, many of us are part of our uh, parent clubs and maybe a regional club as well. Uh, certainly our membership in those organizations is crucially important, but so is our commitment to the all breed and the limited breed clubs as well. Um, in the upcoming issue of Ring Ready, I'm uh, talking in my article about the first Aubrey club that I was a part of and how I was able to participate as just a young guy um, who had time and um, an interest in helping the club. And for their shows, I was put to work with parking, which kind of seemed like a, um, an easy fit for somebody with very little experience. And if you've ever been to a show and you're greeted uh, by uh, a member of the club, um, you know, they're working there on their feet all day for every day that there's a show being held. And um, you'd be surprised at how important parking is to any event. Uh, that's just one example um, of a role that I have some experience in. Uh, being a show chair, as Lee was saying, is often the job of delegating tasks to people who are capable of delivering. And, um, you know, if you have been a part of a committee, you, you realize how much can be thrown at you during the course of a day and certainly the days leading up to a show. Uh, I've attended some shows uh, that were managed fairly well. I've recently attended a national that was so well organized. Um, nothing was left to chance. And I, if I can speak for every exhibitor, it was really one of the finest um, experiences that I've had at a show. Uh, from the site to the trophies to the committee members just being so welcoming. So, um, again, encouraging you to uh, reach out. There's an Aubrey Club. Wherever you live, there's a club that holds monthly meetings. Um, if you can't be there in person, I would imagine that Zoom uh, is a possibility for some of those um, show uh, club meetings. Um, they really uh, would love your support. Um, they are very welcoming. And um, even if your breed is one that is uh, rare as mine is, and you don't uh, see too many of them, um, there are folks at all breed clubs who may not have the same breed as yours, but the things that you will learn by associating with folks in other breeds, um, 
you know, there's no other way to get that um, education. Um, if your breed is a retriever and you have a club filled with folks who have non-sporting breeds or terriers or toys, uh, you're going to learn a great deal about this sport and your own breed by communicating with other folks. And, um, and then, of course, if you volunteer, if you are a steward, um, as was mentioned in uh, this show earlier on, uh, you don't need a lot of experience. There are folks who are willing to help you and train you. And uh, being a steward is a really crucial uh, part of any show. There are some stewards that are paid. They are parts of organized um, organizations, uh, but others are strictly volunteer and every show needs a steward. So that may be something that is um, uh, right for you. Um, hospitality may be another uh, activity that you're good at. I'm always amazed at folks who can throw parties for 40 people as if it was nothing. And those who can put on a show for 1,500 dogs and all the people that come is amazing. But some folks are really, really talented at that. Organizing the caterers, organizing the cleanup, organizing uh, booths and seating and everything else that goes along with hospitality. And then, of course, there are the trophies. We all love to win. We all love to take home a trophy. Um, when you go to shows and you see those beautiful trophies laid out on the tables at so many rings, you know, they, of course, don't happen. They are often donated uh, by artisans. Um, and uh, others are, um, you know, just part of a club's collection that maybe is recirculated. Um, but in any event, some of those tables at some of the specialty clubs in particular are beautiful. And those trophies, there's, a, there's so many talented people in dogs, a lot of artists, craftspeople, and so forth. And if you um, have that talent, uh, there are clubs that would be welcoming your talent uh, in the form of trophies and so forth. Of course, websites are really important. Social media uh, is really important. And if tech is your um, you know, area of expertise, you might be able to help some of these clubs update their websites. Of course, ShowSite has that capability as well. So if your club doesn't know anyone, please reach out to us. Um, I have to admit that uh, when I look at websites for clubs, um, they often need updating. You know, if it's five years old, that's a relatively recent update for many uh, all breed dog clubs. And I think that we need to do a better job because that's how the public reaches us. Um, folks aren't necessarily looking for an ad in a newspaper and saying, oh, the dog show is in town. Let's pack up the family and go to the show. Um, what they're doing is going online and they're learning about dogs that way. So if your club is having an event, there are ways that you can push your message through social media and entice those families and those folks who love dogs to come to your event. Um, that is um, likely a volunteer position if you're a member of that club, but there are um, people here at ShowSite who can really help you facilitate your website and get it updated and push the message out when your show is uh, is about to be held. Uh, there are so many things. There's 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 nobody in dogs whose talent and abilities cannot be harnessed um, by a club, whether it's for a confirmation show, a performance event. I was at a show last month, a very wonderful show that had dock diving, it had rally, it had obedience, it had, uh, I think it had barn hunt. There was so much going on and the atmosphere of this show weekend was, was almost like a carnival. It was really light and fun. And of course, everybody was happy to be out of their house and back at a dog show. And, um, but certainly, um, you know, putting on those events as part of a confirmation show is also um, something that um, is certainly welcomed by many, many clubs. As, as our guest today said, there are many, um, many people who come to a show with their dog, show and breed, but want to do other things. They want those other titles at the end of their dog's name as well. And there, there are just so many opportunities in dogs now 
And, uh, and all of those activities are put on by people who organize them. If it's a barn hunt, those bales of hay have to come to the show site somewhere. That pool for dock diving, and I don't know how much water is in, in those. I'm not quite sure how the water gets in those pools, but somebody takes care of that. And so it's, um, you know, that may be something that you would like to, to help organize. Um, just have fun. And really, it's a way of giving back to the club. It's a way of giving back to your breed. It's a way of giving back to the sport. And, um, you know, we're hoping that we can um, meet many of you at the shows this summer and into the fall. As I mentioned, we will be uh, reporting to you live from a number of these shows so if you're planning on attending Montgomery County, the Alterrier Club here in the East in Pennsylvania, or if you are going to be coming East for Morris and Essex, I encourage you to say hello if you see me or if you see Lee. And um, I believe there's still time to enter those shows. So if it is not on your radar, it ought to be. Because uh, in the case of Morris and Essex especially, it is held only every five years. It was to be held last year, but due to the pandemic, it's being held this year in early October. So we will be there. We hope to see you there as well. So on behalf of Lee and everyone who's watching, I want to thank you for joining Ring Ready Live this week. Next week, I will be traveling, so I will not be talking to you. Lee will be um, talking to you directly, but um, I'll miss you and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you again in two weeks time. So until then, um, thank you again. Remember to have fun with your dogs. And Le Denise, uh, best of luck with that litter. Let us know how many boys, how many girls you have and how mom is doing. So um, thanks everyone. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.